my daughter asked me directly at, when she was five and three quarters, am I going to die from my leukemia? You know, well, that's, a, you know, I'm faced with that question and I was never going to lie. Um, but that allowed us to all be together with her dying. So I think um, it's very, very hard to imagine because it just breaks our hearts that our child knows they're facing death. But most children sense it. And there's a beautiful book called Armfuls of Time that is um, stories of children who say to you know, people like healthcare professionals, I know I'm dying, but I'm not gonna tell mommy and daddy because they would be too upset and they haven't told me about it. And I've spoken about this in grand rounds at various medical centers where someone presents a case to me where a child is acting up at home who's dying. And we find out that the parents have not talked about it with them. And they are just overwhelmed with what they're feeling inside and have no place to go with it. So I wanna encourage parents to not be afraid of that. You can explore it. You don't have to necessarily say, you are going to die from your illness, but you can open up questions that eventually allow them to see that they can raise it. One could be, have you heard the doctors talking about your sickness? Because often, unfortunately, doctors will step out of a hospital room and then they're talking in the hallway. But an astute child is listening to every word that is said. Sometimes they talk in the room. And so, okay, so have you heard the doctors talking and what did you hear? That's one. Um, how do you think you're doing is another one because that may open up, well, I'm not getting better. Okay, well, do you think you are going to get better? I, I don't know, you know, then you, then you have a conversation going and you might be able to say, well, we don't know for sure either, but it looks as though your sickness is so big that the doctors are having a hard time making you better. And then you've introduced it and then you go stepwise and so on. Um, so um, that's one, two prompts. Another would be, have you had thoughts about your illness? Um, or as in your situation, if someone else has died, let's say even it's a grandparent, you know, grandpa died. Have you had thoughts about when people die and what makes them die. And then you're opening up a conversation about death in general, which a child might then use to walk through the door and say, um, I, is that gonna happen to me? And then, you're, then you've got the conversation going. All I, I wanna emphasize, if a child comes forward to you with the question, I really hope that parents can find, it takes enormous strength you don't have to answer that question right away at that moment, but that you come back to it and basically say, yeah, it looks as though we don't have the medicines right now that are going to make you better enough. And you are not going to be able to live with this sickness and you are going to die. And we're all going to be together and we're all going to go through it together. And then you open up the possibility of helping a child think about what happens after they die my daughter thought that she was going to still be able to communicate with me. So I endorsed that. You know, I said, yes, we're going to be together in our hearts. We're not going to communicate the way we used to, like in voices. It'll be more in our hearts. And so you have a chance to offer a child comfort. And if you don't name it, you can't offer them comfort about it either. And surprisingly, there is comfort. So, um, I mean, I know it's hard. I, I deeply know it is hard, but I also know that every parent that I've talked with who acknowledges it with a dying child has been really glad they did. I have not once come across in all my clinical years, and I'm aged enough to say decades, um, in which a parent regretted telling them. Um, but they need to feel prepared to deal with what happens after. <laughs>